Welcome. Today I would uh, continue uh, talking about uh, Poly and specifically how to do HTTP caching with Poly. So let's get started. I've already done a, a session on how to do HTTP retry. So we will build upon it. Uh, you can watch that video if you haven't or if you're interested in that. Uh, basically, we will use this JSON placeholder uh, API endpoint and uh, is uh, available for anybody and we'll use the get post uh, to get a user id of one for example here so let's just get started let me just show you what we already did in the last one and it's a pretty straightforward so i have refactored this a little bit so the refactoring is pretty straightforward i call a function called setup and uh, this function is essentially setting up the retry policy that we talked about last time and every time it retries it prints out the retry counter and uh, uh, what i've also done is uh, the request endpoint i've separated it out here so you can see if it is correct or uh, for it to be correct i need to change it to post so that it will hit the endpoint correctly uh, here we are uh, for simplicity just getting an uh, aesthetically an http client and I have defined what we were using as a retry policy here, static object. And um, I have also defined, taken the liberty to define two new things that we will talk about in this session is uh, something called the cache policy. And uh, the cache policy is uh, what uh, we are going to uh, talk mostly in this and how to set up a cache policy. Essentially what it is, is if you're trying to hit uh, an endpoint uh, within say some time period, and that's the simplest case we'll take a look at, say within some time period of five minutes, uh, it will just return the cache data instead of uh, hitting the endpoint again. So that's the advantage of using a cache policy. Uh, to be able to combine the retry policy and the cache policy, I would also talk about something called the policy wrap and uh, that would be part of the discussion. So these are the apparently the objects. And right now I'm calling fetch with uh, ID of one and fetch ID with, of one again. So you should really be calling it twice. So if I just run .NET run here, you would see uh, that uh, it essentially uh, calls uh, um, .NET run would get two results uh, because it called the endpoint twice the requested endpoint ties and that's what we expected. So only other new thing that we are going to do here is to add the caching uh, and to do that you need to add policy.caching memory caches and then the policy.wrap and in the project uh, uh, we already had poly I'm using a poly version 5.90 so I'm adding the memory cache here which is uh, the new get package you also need. So that's pretty much all uh, we need here. So let me uh, kind of build this uh, through and I already have some code which I can use to uh, reduce the typing time. So, and I will explain to you exactly what I'm doing. So let me first copy some of the code. So first thing we want to uh, do is to build upon our uh, policies that we are creating because we want to create a cache policy as well. So what I will do is in the setup, I will add some code to do that and I will kind of walk you through it. So let's take a quick look. So basically we create a cache and you get a memory cache and it's, this is from Microsoft extensions caching memory cache and here we just are not giving any, any options but we are supplying something in the constructor. So once you have the cache we uh, set it for a memory cache provider and this memory cache provider is coming from poly caching memory cache so you can see that. So it's pretty straightforward to set this object and then I'm specifying one of the simplest cache policies. So I'm saying it's going to be an async policy which is returning an HTTP response message and I will uh, put in the provider and it's a time span from five minutes for example. Uh, this is the case and we can change it but let's just leave it at five it's not a big deal. So now what we want to do is uh, use our policy wrap and you can see I have definition of policy wrap here as a static object and uh, all I'm going to do is uh, wrap uh, both of them are going to return HTTP response so first I want to apply our caching policy so if we have already have the results we can just return it from the cache otherwise we go into the retry policy and everything else so that's uh, pretty much how you set up the policies 
so and let me uh, copy some more code uh, so we can uh, kind of uh, see how this would work and uh, let me do that so one thing we uh, need to do is instead of just using the retry policy i want to use the policy wrap which is basically a combination of cache policy and retry policy so i'm going to override what i had here with that and let's just uh, format the document so here what i'm doing is i'm just creating a context so whenever we have an id uh, it is uh, essentially simulating we are doing get by id so that's what it is uh, I just want to put a uh, debug statement saying making an HTTP call and if you would notice the only difference from what I had previously is pretty much I'm using a policy wrap here instead of a retry policy and I also had in this version to supply some argument because it was needed so but it looks pretty straightforward and simple to understand so it's doing the policy wrap. So let's just uh, first run this without uh, doing anything else so if this endpoint is working so it should really uh, make a call making http get call twice but uh, it should have essentially no retries because there's really nothing retrying and it's going to print the results twice and uh, it should be able to return the caching cache results so let's so the result should look exactly like what we had before so let me just run this thing for a second here and uh, we can uh, wash together and see if I didn't make any uh, mistakes in um, typing. So you can say it calls making HTTP get call and it gets the results, prints it out and does the same thing here and it prints out the result. So how do we know if this caching is working? The quick thing to do is put just put a debug statement here and I'm going to now run it in the debugger. So let's just say debug start debugging and it's going to do the same thing. So first time uh, the cache doesn't really have anything so it should hit the cache and uh, and not find anything so it is going to go through and uh, make a call to our api and it should really make a call to the api only once so that's it it should only hit this breakpoint once and uh, we should be all done so you can see uh, we never hit this breakpoint again and everything worked so that's actually pretty good so other thing I wanted to quickly demonstrate is the retry seeing because we have a combination here. So I'm going to mess up this endpoint. So it's not a really a non-existing endpoint. So you can see that if I run it in the debugger, it is also going to do the retries and come here again. So let's just try that debug start debugging. And uh, let's uh, go through. So it is trying to hit an endpoint which doesn't really exist. So there is really not much it can cache. So here you can see it hit the endpoint first time and it's uh, let me just try it again and here you can see it is uh, hitting it again and it's even uh, printing this message the debug statement we had last time where the retry count is printed as part of the retry policy here you can see the retries are being printed so that's it uh, for the so you can see it is retrying twice and everything worked fine so this is pretty much all I wanted to uh, show you guys. Uh, I am going to add this to my website under Gore Associates. And uh, what I'll do is um, after the uh, video on the HTTP retries, I will add this video. Thanks for watching this short screencast and you have a great day.